Do you like crying? Not the kind of crying you get from happy feelings, but rather the opposite. Probably not, right? But if you're like me, you get sucked into shows or movies that have a really relatable storyline and characters. And that is exactly the kind of thing we're going to be talking about today, with an in-depth review of another tearjerker, which is the lesser known anime film Makia, When the Promised Flower Blooms. What's going on everyone? I'm broken obsessed in my otaku ways, bringing in-depth anime reviews, recommendations, and more, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new. And without further ado, let's begin. Mari Okada has created so many emotional shows that squeeze your heart in ways you didn't think were possible, with examples of Iron Blood and Orphans, or Anohana, being some of the most heart-wrenching anime to this day. She has her fair share of comedy and action as well, so she is well versed in genre selection. However, you know when you see your name on an animation that involves flowers in any way, shape, or form, you better be ready to cry into your pillow at night wondering if you're really alive. Makia, or When the Promised Flower Blooms, is really no exception. In Anohana, when you get to the final few episodes, you realize how much it hits you when you have snot dripping down your face. The final scenes of Makia are really no different, with the scenes leading up to this being another Mari Okada made emotional roller coaster. While being the screenwriter, however, this is also the first film that was directed by Okada, meaning that every emotion you feel in Makia is in its purest form, seeing that it is the way she intended it to turn out in the end. Makia is focused on the main carrier, Makia herself, who is part of a family who stops aging in their mid-teens. One night, Makia's village is attacked by dragon-equipped soldiers from a neighboring kingdom, hoping that one of the mortal maidens can help continue the heir of their own prince. Makia is then forced into the world of mortals, which we all know sucks, being as that were a part of them, sadly. Shortly after she's forced out on her own, she finds a helpless human baby, who she decides to more or less adopt and raise as her own, and names him Ariel. The storyline of this beautiful film follows this new family throughout the course of their entire lives, showing us the growth of Ariel as he grows up and seeing Makia stay young, seeing as she is immortal. As time progresses in this movie, we see the small scenes scattered throughout that changes the way their relationship was when it first began. There's not a lot of fantasy films or shows out there that can make you feel how intimate and grand the world around them really is, but with some of the larger events in Makia, we start noticing that they start to change the world around them. From the people surrounding Ariel and Makia to the very staple of the world they live in, starts to slowly change over the course of the movie due to certain events that occurred in the past. While it's rather easy to get lost in the fantasy aspects and long narrative, Makia is based around the premise of motherhood showing us that aren't parents what it really means to be a mother and everything in between that comes along with it. And it does this very thing beautifully. From the overprotectiveness of when your child is still young to the mixed emotions you would feel as they grow into the adult you raise them to be, ultimately making them become their own person with their own goals and achievements. While this show has its ups and downs, one thing I am thankful for that we have seen a lot of is that while Makia stays 15 forever, and her son is growing up, we don't see that incesty mo- Now if you're into that kind of thing, I'm not trying to downplay you because to each their own, but this specific anime was not made for that kind of trope. Rather, it stays on its path of showing us parenthood, which is a nice change because nowadays it's not something you would expect. Makia is one of the few shows that after finishing, It'll make you want to call your parents, but it also helps the rest of the fantasy themes feel a lot more grounded and relatable, despite not being a realistic setting. We share the emotional journey with Makia not only with Ariel, but her relationships and outlooks on the people around her as well. While we see these relations with others, you mainly see her outlooks with her kidnapped as a child best friend Lalia, who has been kept apart from her own daughter. We are able to see every emotion unravel into a beautiful ribbon that some people call the ugly cry. One thing that stands out a lot in this specific film is that we are able to understand and connect with the relations of other characters, despite them not actually being displayed on the screen. While some people may view this as a negative, it actually helps Makia's story progress more quickly, with every major plot point being able to come together almost perfectly, and the repeated comments such as Makia commenting on Ariel always smelling like the sun, we're able to follow where the characters are emotionally every time we go to a time skip or a new location. 
the narrative and commentary of Machia feels perfectly placed and follows the story to a T. Rather than feeling all over the place, we are able to follow alongside all of the characters, even when the show brings an unexpected time skip to the viewer's eyes, allowing even more engagement to be created in this already relatable plot. While these are some really difficult things to pull off, especially in anime, this is written and directed by Mari Okada, so of course it was going to be put together perfectly. This movie not only has a beautiful storyline, but the animation shots, cuts, and almost everything else are what I feel make Makia so fantastic as a whole. The lighting and color schemes of certain scenarios are what multiplies the emotion emotions we are already feeling, and make us want to continue to be brought into the story altogether. We know that CG in anime almost makes us always want to puke most of the time. However, with Makia, this is definitely not the case, as the backdrop and some of the shots bring a lot of power into relaying the message that's being displayed at the time. For the people that are turned off when I mention CGI, you'll be happy to know that when these scenarios do happen, that you will barely even be able to tell that it's happening. If there was one thing I could point out and criticize about Makia, is that the style of the animation itself doesn't really stand out as much as, like if you were to watch a Shinkai Makoto film, where you know by first glance that it is indeed a Shinkai film. Which is a shame for Makia, as it has had every right to scream that this animation was done by Mari Okada. But even with that being the one and only flaw that I noticed in Makia, it is still one of the best anime films there is, and with good reason behind it. Makia is beautiful, and for anyone that hasn't seen it, it's only about an hour and a half long, so I suggest you do go and watch it whenever you have some free time. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a like on this video if you enjoy in-depth reviews on anime and good recommendations for Weebly Minds. Also, if you have a specific series you would like me to cover, then make sure to leave a comment letting me know what it is, and I'll get to work on it as soon as possible. I'm Broken Obsessed with my otaku ways, and I will see all of you lovely weebs next time.